I'm here with Alden Nielsen. Alden, how are you? Pretty good. Good. Yeah. We've got a poem. Been in town 10 minutes. <laughs> it, turns out, it turns out a poem from your book, Trey, yeah. that's slightly a slightly earlier version, but nonetheless, it's 44.1. Would you read it and then we'll talk about it? Sure, sure. This, uh, this originally appeared in Nate Mackey's journal, Hambone. Touch screen to return to the re return to the south, the touch, return to screen the south, the south, the new south touch for new avatar, return for new south, return the south, the return to the south, refresh screen the south, the gone, return to the with the with the gone with the gone with what when screen return to the screen, the return link broken. There's, so there's a lot of a lot of punning, obviously. But the first question I'll ask you, since this is this piece, yeah. the, all the poems are working with the memory of and the tragedy of Trayvon Martin. In, in, does this poem have to do with Trayvon specifically? Well, this is the opening poem, in a, and as you know, a fairly long sequence and. Uh, what had happened, as you can see there, originally this was going to be called 44. There's all kinds of numerology playing throughout the, the entire series. Yeah. Obama was the 44th president and so forth. Right. But what happened is I'd started writing these pieces, and then somehow, this doesn't happen to me anymore at this stage of life, but I just woke up with this Gertrude Stein repetition thing happening in my head. Yeah. So, you know, before I could lose it, I went into the computer and, and typed it and just made a couple of slight changes later. And what it has to do with is, you know, the whole conception that was trying to float around during the Obama era of the New South, uh, of the, being post-racial and so forth and so on. A person my age has had multiple New Souths. You know? right. And we touch on that a little bit with the references to the, the old New South of Gone with the Wind, uh, which also was parodied in a jazz song called with what, with, Gone with What Wind, right. and playing with the T-H-E and T-H-E and so forth. So it's, a, it's an introductory opening up but it opens up with things being broken and not mm -hmm. connecting properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And touch screen will remind all of us or make us all think about a certain kind of mediation. Yeah. yeah. Right. So can you say something more about why you chose to start that way? Well, again, it, this doesn't happen to me anymore, but this one sort of chose me. Uh, it was probably just in my brain because I became such a big fan of touch screens and I'm always in an airport or something where you touch a screen to start something. Right. So this was the beginning and it was a way of touching it, but also thinking of the conception of screening. Uh, both the way that the media screens out the realities of events or the media brings us events and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're in a mediated universe, we've been in that universe for my whole lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the only real difference now is that where, as a child, we used to put these clear plastic things on a TV screen and draw a bridge for the little character to draw, walk across and so forth and so on. Now we actually have avatars and styli and right. fingers. Right. So it's become simultaneously more tactile and more mediated at the same yes. time. And um, that was the way the Trayvon Martin case sort of developed in so many ways because uh, everything we know of him, those of us who aren't family members, came from the media and so much of it was just wrong from the very beginning. You know, uh, the, the mere fact that it, that it was the Zimmerman case uh, right. and so forth. Uh, Can I overread that? Point, Probably. Just try. No, I, I mean, not Knowing may, you, I, I'm not sure you may I, not may I. Oh, no, I actually, you were responding to my saying, if I can, yeah. Um, so the, uh, link, the link is broken at the end. Yeah, yeah. Right, so in a way, touch screen is good. You say you like it as part of the computer age we live in. But at the same time, um, the Trayvon Martin situation in, in this mediated, intense mediated, you choose your own course through a story yeah. thing about the hi hypertextuality, allowed us all to go to do to project onto the Trayvon Martin case a whole bunch of stuff that's, that was bullshit or that was not right. But by the so same, there's so, a downside to but that. In the midst of all obviously. that, though, as you're choosing, you, I can tell you're old enough to remember the hyperlink days, which were supposed to have changed everything, right? But yeah. No matter what you think you're going to do, you wind up doing something else. Not That's just right. because of broken links, but because the branching structure takes you to a different place than you thought. But my going point on. was that this was going to augur in, let's say, the late 90s or early aughts, mm. this was going to augur new narrative possibilities. And what it wound up doing in the Trayvon Martin case is it allowed people to spiral off in any kind of projected narrative when you kind of seem to be longing a little bit for a little more control, not control, the wrong word, a little more focus on the right narrative as opposed to the mediated narrative. Well, not so much the right narrative as other narratives. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we only have five minutes, but the, the mere sound of the term new narrative was to set me off because that, for a point during the time period we're talking about, that was actually 
a coalition of poets who are very much more conservative aligned with the new formalists, but right. now we know it mostly as a term for more avant-garde right. kind of prose right. writing. Right. Um, I'm always looking for new narratives. As a writer, I always want to control everything. I know right. that I can't control everything. Right. Right. Um, in the case of the, uh, of the subject matter of this, um, there's a lot of quotations in this poem from jurors, from news media, from people on the street and so right, forth, right. to show just how all of the links were broken. N you know, nobody's comments were connecting up with anybody right. else's comments. And right. of course, what got lost right. was the person of right. Trayvon Martin himself. I make no pretense of putting him here in this poem. He's not right. really there. He's not really there, no. except that yeah. it's part of the, the, the It's part of the narrative. Yeah. 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 One more quick question. Quick question. Mm -hmm. The word return is very powerful here. Mm -hmm. Say something about that finally. Well, we used to have machines where you hit a return. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I guess Lineation. now it says enter or something like that. Yeah. But also this whole conception of the New South, um, I'd always been told that Atlanta was the one part of the New South that was really new. and That's what people thought about Sanford, Florida when they were creating Sanford, Florida. Right. right? right. Um, so there's always this question of returning to something that wasn't there in the first place. Zimmerman literally returned to the scene of the crime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the jurors actually returned to the scene of the crime. Trayvon Martin was removed from the scene. There's no return right. for him right. or for right. his family. Right, right. You know? okay. Alan Nielsen, thank you. The book sure. is Trey, yeah. and this was really Make great. Now Press. Make Now Press. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you very, very much. much. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.